Hello everybody, Crit Crab here with some more RPG horror stories. One of them, I kid you not, about a player that tried to intimidate the bard into playing Old Town Road. The following story is about a Mary Sue getting shut down. But first, I want to yet again tell you about our sponsors in an amazing app called Reroll. Reroll is a helpful new app that lets you bring your D&D characters to life in a cool, retro, 16-bit style. With 16 supported races and many more customization options, you can create and design your character to your exact specifications. On top of its primary function as a character visualizer, it also comes with a nifty character sheet so you can keep track of all of your character needs in one simple app. But you don't have to take my word for it. It has a free version you can use as well as a 4.3 out of 5 stars on the App Store. So click the link in the description to go check it out. Anyways, all that aside, roll post. We're heading out on a long journey in the Tyranny of Dragons campaign. A half-orc fighter decides that he wants to intimidate me, a halfling bard, into playing Old Town Road. The DM reminds him that he can try to persuade instead. He responds that he wants to intimidate because of his proficiency. He rolls a natural 20. Oh, I play the song, but what else am I going to do? But I don't interact with him for the rest of the leg. He then starts calling me out out of character because he was saying I was taking it too seriously. Out of character, I tell him, Too seriously? You wanted to intimidate your travel companion into playing a song instead of just asking. You didn't even try. He made this choice and my character responded accordingly. I don't really know what he expected. He could have just as easily rolled a 15 or something for persuasion and everything would be all good. What's worse is that he's dating my best friend who is also in the campaign. Edit. I completely forgot that he also threatened to break my f***ing instruments if I didn't play the song. Edit 2. Thanks everyone for the advice. As mentioned in the comments, I reacted to the situation how I thought my character would behave. The DM wasn't really asking for a persuasion check, more encouraging him to persuade me through roleplay. Nobody else really stepped in because I think we were all just stunned. There will definitely be clearer rules about charisma checks against players, and a gentle reminder that this campaign is a marathon, not a sprint, and that there is no winner at D&D. End post. Yeah, no. One thing that should never even be considered an option is rolling to persuade another player, as it kills roleplay and takes away player control, which you should only ever do very, very rarely and in very specific scenarios. I can understand why some would roll insight or deception between players even though that's not really for me or for my group, but rolling to essentially control someone else's character is where the line has to be drawn. Next post. I was starting a small campaign for a group of friends that had never played before. I walked everyone through character creation, normal process for most people except one guy. He told me not to take him through things because he had read through the books before and knew what he was doing. I told him I wanted to see his stuff before we started still since it was his first time and I wanted to incorporate some character stuff into the backstory. When we met up, he started showing me page after page of backstory ripped straight off from Tolkien and Dark Souls. Apparently, he came from a painted world and was from a noble family that still had vast holdings in our world. As his retainers, he has two powerful mages guarding him. He also had a ring that was the only thing that can stop a grand dark lord from possessing the minds of all people, and only by using it against this lord, with his magical bloodline, can he save everyone and restart the fire at the heart of the world. It's no problem because he was prophesied to save the whole world by an angel at birth. Of course, being this noble, he's fabulously wealthy and is the heir to the kingdom where the story was taking place. Needless to say, I was having none of this. I told him about how this is a collaborative storytelling environment and everyone can have a chance to shine here. Nobody is the sole hero and everyone has to be at basically the same level of power. I let him have two retainers who had no real abilities and made him a son of a deposed king. As for the world and story beats, I encouraged him to continue writing that story if he wanted. Together we managed to make his stuff connect to the world we were in over a few hours and much debate. 
In session one, he started talking about how he was prophesied to save everyone to the party. I made it clear that this was just delusions of grandeur. He decided to make himself the party leader, despite not really knowing how to talk to people. By session two, he was largely ignored by the party as they didn't want him leading. His protests and claims of greatness were met with eye rolls. Session three and beyond, he didn't even show up. Fare thee well, O greatest of Mary Sues. End post. Before I go any further, I just want to point out how ironic it is that they pick Tolkien and Dark Souls as inspirations, since both of those are like polar opposites of fantasy. But they do have one thing in common, and that is how the protagonist is completely normal and not special in any way. Anyways, prophecy. I've had divine prophecy in one of my games, and it worked out great, but here's the big problem with prophecies in TRPGs. They take player agency away. When the players succeed, it'll feel hollow because it was already predestined. And when they fail, it won't matter because they know they will eventually succeed. Prophecies can be handled well in TRPGs, but it takes a very skilled table to pull it off. Before I let you off, I also just wanted to add that this is how you handle Mary Sue's in your games. Deprive them of the attention and spotlight they so desperately crave because self-centered people will not tolerate not being the center of attention. I understand that this isn't always applicable, especially in the more extreme scenarios, but it's a silver bullet to the more harmless Mary Sue's. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more stories just like this one. Till next time.